This episode of The Minimalist is brought to you by nobody, because advertisements suck. This podcast has bad words. <laughs> Hello, simpletons. Welcome to The Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are The Minimalists. We're here with another simpleton. That's right. Jamie Kilstein is here in the studio. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. He's back <laughs> once again. Yeah. So we're all a little bit gullible and foolish, and that's why we're all the simpletons, really. I like it. That was also like the first time that I've accepted how I've been introduced because of being self-hating. Whenever people are like, hilarious comedian, I'm like, oh, that's not going to... That, let's set the bar lower. And when you were like, simpleton, I was like, word. You're like, <laughs> I'm down with that. Don't worry. We're the king simpletons. King and king simpleton. Great. Yeah, now, Jamie is a, a uh, comedian. You get to decide whether or not he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, in interviews, usually, whenever I'm set up, like when I, when I used to have to do like... Remember like wacky morning radio? Yes. Where it was always like... Like, Ryan uh, and I have done way too many wacky oh, movies. Right it would be like oh, yeah. these rock and roll stations and they're like, it's farting the girl. And then it was just like a bunch of guys like yelling at this poor woman at like <laughs> six in the morning while they like pounded breakfast burritos. Uh, oh my God. They would always, yeah, like try to cue me up for bits. Mm. And in real life, like I like doing, I like talking to you guys. Like I like talking about real things. Mm. So that always be like hilarious, man. And then JB Kilstein and they'd be like, what have you been thinking about? I'm like, uh, institutional racism, war crime. <laughs> and it would just get so dark. Sad. <laughs> They're like, wait, that's not funny. Yeah, and then I'd be like, all right, see me tonight at the Chuckle Factory or whatever. So, anyway. All right, uh, so Jamie will be at the Chuckle Hut this Wednesday. I will, this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday through Wednesday. Now, um, here's the thing. Uh, w the reason I wanted to have Jamie on to talk about this specific topic, because it is a difficult topic. In the new book we're working on, uh, Love People Use Things, We there's a chapter in there about the truth. And, and really, the truth is the one of the most difficult things to talk about kafka said that you can discuss the truth only through jokes mm, that's great a and mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's why people like dave Chappelle or anthony jeselnik even mm -hmm. who is an absurdist um or, or drew michael is another one of my favorite comedians uh, gerard carmichael is, mm -hmm. is phenomenal they approximate the truth through humor so hopefully we'll be able to use some humor today to talk about a very serious subject. Today we're gonna to talk about dealing with toxic people. We're gonna to talk about uh, defining, reassessing, repairing, and also letting go of toxic relationships. Now I think this is gonna be one, this is gonna be a classic episode. I feel, I can feel it right now because this topic comes up a lot. I, I uh, all the questions today, by the way, Jamie, they uh, they came from the birthplace of toxic toxicity, Facebook. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> great. So I went to Facebook and I just said, "Hey, we're we're doing an episode about dealing with toxic people." And it's probably probably the most popular thing we put on Facebook in the last month. Oh, that wow. is so depressing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it, it makes total sense. But we have so many questions. We'll get to as many as we can here on this minimal episode, and then we'll address the rest on the maximum. We'll get even more personal there. Before we dive into our first question, I want to apologize for my facial hair. You're so cute when you try and grow a beard. I forgot to shave this morning. And so if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to roast me in the comments it below. Looks good. It, it does. That is that beard is um it looks like your 16 year old self growing a beard. <laughs> which coincidentally you still look about 16 years old. <laughs> Ryan and I have been doing this little app that tells us what you what your age looks like in your photos. Yeah. And uh, I'll just text him like never forget. <laughs> and, and it'll be like Josh looks. We're standing right next to each other. I'm 27, and Ryan is always 40 in every photo. 44, no matter what. Great. No matter when that picture was taken, it's always like 40. But you know, that's I've always I've always, like post pubescent have always looked like five to ten years older than yeah. I actually. I think am. the beer thing's great. It, it, it's like it, it's it, it's a quarantine look. It's an evil twin look. If like you wanted to kind of like <laughs> jump the shark with the minimalist, it's yeah. also a disgraced politician disappears for two years, <laughs> then comes back for a CNN interview look. Yeah. That's my favorite. Like. Uh, 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 Bill Richardson, the governor, when he uh, after he lost for president, Al Gore, when he came back, remember he had like that huge beard, yes. and it was just kind of like, is Al Gore cool? Like, <laughs> I dig it, I like it. Yeah, I, I'm a fucking train. If you could have like now. grown your hair out, it would have been even better. No, dude, you have the perfect disheveled look, man. It is very endearing. Like you can pull. I wish I could pull off very disheveled sweet, like that. Well, I don't know. Like I don't. It, I haven't cut it at all. I don't know what to I don't know what to do cuz I do kind of want to grow it out cuz I like it messy like this. Mm -hmm. I was talking about this uh, I did my first shows back uh, 
the other day and I was talking about this on stage where I've you guys know me per like on and off the show and you know it's been very hard for me to just date and I used to jump into relationships very 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 fast and but every time I try to just be like I'm just gonna be a guy I'm just gonna hook up I always end up in relationships and it's because of what you said where I <laughs> had this realization that it's because like I'm not like hot guy you want to bang in a bar attractive. I'm like uh, like baby broken bird who needs to be nursed back to health attractive where girls are like, we have to help him and like feed him. And like he cries to baby Yoda memes. And it's like, I do. Uh, and so like, that's why I attract it. It's that like endearing, like, oh, but it's not like, yeah, look at him. It's we, working we for you, brother. We have friends like that. Like, yeah. like our friend Colin, mm -hmm. um, our friend Carl from Minimalissimo. Mm. Um, who are bar, who are take you home from a bar and bang hot? Well, no, they're just like um, you know. I would stop my life to pursue this person, yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. But that can actually be toxic behavior. It as is well. No, 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 oh, absolutely, it hundred percent. And so let's let's dive into it. Okay. Our, our first question right now. Uh, is we, instead of voicemail, I got all of these from Facebook. Eva in London has a question for us. Ryan, what's your definition of a toxic person? Is it a type of person or rather a kind of behavior that appears in certain relationships? Is it possible that I could be a toxic person to you, but a really sincere and lovely person to many others? Mm. Yeah, That's now, so, interesting. So let me let me give you the definition of toxic. And I, I have this in our, it's the, the people chapter of Love People Use Things, which by the way, I just turned in the, the third draft last night. So our oh, next yeah. book is coming out. Congratulations. I started the fourth draft this morning at about 5 a.m. Perfect. And uh, so the final chapter, it's, it's, a, it's a relationship book, but it's about the different relationships we have with ourself. So whether it's with the truth or with our stuff, you know, that's sort of the first relationship we tackle in there. The, uh, the relationship with ourselves, the relationship with values or money or creativity or distractions or technology, but then also it ends with our relationship with people, okay. right? And I think one of the things that comes up time and time again is how do we deal and how do we identify what is a toxic person? And so the definition that I have in the book is a toxic a toxic relationship is a harmful or un is harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive and or insidious way. Okay. So a toxic relationship is harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. They could have just said all of Jamie's relationships. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I think that's that, that's a thing that like it's if if every relationship tends to to end up toxic. Yeah. Now we we need to define relationships as well because I disagree with what you're saying. I mean, obviously you're joking, but like totally. you and I have a relationship. It's not right. It's not right, a, right, right, right. It's not a, a sexual intimate relationship. Well, now that you Yet. got that, now that you got that beard, it is <laughs> your, your sexy fourth draft beard. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I'll, I'll dive a little bit more into the book a, a little bit later on, but um, let's talk about how do we identify toxic relationships? Yeah, well, I think that, I mean, the, the first thing before I forget, um, Ava's, the, the very last part of her question I thought was really interesting, which was, can I... Uh, be uh, toxic to someone in particular. Yeah, I think she might be talking about, and you guys tell me if I'm if I'm wrong on this. But you could be triggering to somebody, sure, without necessarily like being a toxic person. I think that's kind of maybe what she's describing. Because look, mm. there are toxic people who, as famed philosopher Miley Cyrus says, come in like a wrecking ball <laughs> and will just like mess up your shit, right? And yep. like the, the the those times, a lot of times, those people are um, narcissists narcissistic they're selfish they just the kind of people who just suck your life force and have to bring you down to mm -hmm. i mean i've had relationships where not only were girls jealous of like my friends or jujitsu but they were jealous like if i meditated they didn't mm -hmm. like if i meditated like anything that would make me better and therefore wow. more capable of leaving you know yeah. and but then where it, my fault was i was like codependent that i'm like oh well if this really hot girl is crazy enough to do that she's not going to leave me so hooray and mm -hmm. like we would both just like enable each other yeah. so like i think but if she like let's say ava is in a I think it's eva eva sorry let's say eva uh is uh in a relationship and she has a bunch of guy friends and you know the person she's dating that triggers something where you know he had a girlfriend who used to like cheat a lot or whatever mm -hmm. like that's not her fault that's yeah. just maybe their lives aren't compatible you know what i mean so like my definition of if you are in a toxic relationship i think the first thing i think of is someone who is consistently making you feel 
less than, who's not pushing you to be your best self, and who you feel like like quicksand. You feel like it's just kind of dragging you down, mm -hmm. and you feel just trapped in the relationship. Totally. I, th I think the opposite of that, Eva, is... Are you a person who shows respect? Do you show compassion? Do you uh, show that you understand the other person? Because if you're doing that, that's a surefire way to assure that you are not a toxic person. I, I found the last part of her question interesting too because oftentimes we can be around people and get mad about the same thing. Mm. Well, it might be two toxic people who are getting angry about a certain issue and they're feeding off each other's toxicity. Right. So now, the, I, I'd like to just, I'd like to, put a pin in that for a second and say it's possible and I think in most cases I would stop looking for the toxic person mm -hmm. and I mean we're going to call this episode toxic people because there are toxic people but most of the time a toxic person is really just a series or maybe even just one mm -hmm. toxic behavior sure. it's just like if yeah, we put yeah, yeah. if I put a spoonful of strychnine into a a, a stew mm -hmm. the entire thing becomes toxic the mm. stew isn't by definition toxic but when I put the strychnine in there all of a sudden mm -hmm. now you have this poison I thought you yeah. were gonna say that is just a toxic behavior and I'm like no bro that's a toxic person if you're putting strychnine in the stew <laughs> uh, yeah that's a really really good point i mean you yeah. do have people who are just bad people they yeah. just they feel bad about themselves and so they need to drag their partner down to mm -hmm. their level and that i would consider toxic but you're right yeah. for the most part it is just there are certain behaviors you know like um i always say his name wrong but uh alan de de uh de pont or, or uh, de botan there it is mm -hmm. uh, alan de botan <laughs> um he always talks about how in relationships we expect these you know, we want the romantic comedy. We want mm -hmm. the the soulmate. We want these perfect relationships. We try to put on uh, sort of an image of what we think they want our best self to look like in the first couple of dates, and then you know, a month or two, and you have your first fight, and sort of you get this like, oh, this like sick to your stomach, like, oh, it's happening again. I thought this was going to be perfect. When in reality, you should look at relationships as being like, okay, here's all of my crazy. Mm. What's all of your crazy? cool can this be compatible mm. can this work you know yeah. and i really do like that because i think that a relationship at its best is two broken people trying to live the best lives they can and trying mm. to help each other and trying to lift each other and you know I, I i do like that but you watch enough romantic comedies where i mean there's part of me that thinks like romantic comedies are like more dangerous than porn you know what i mean like mm. porn at least has like semi-realistic endings we're like yeah that's how sex ends um <laughs> but like romantic comedies it's like you do like i i one of the reasons look one of the reasons i jump into relationships very fast is because i'm codependent but the other reason is I want those stupid romantic stories. Mm. I want to meet the girl at the coffee shop in Iowa and somebody now, just now, be like, we should run away want, together, you know? Yeah, I don't know that yeah. you want that. I think that's a mimetic belief, right? Where, where it's, you've been acculturated to believe yeah, that no, you No, that's want what that. I'm saying. Yeah, 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 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah. But then it happens and I'm just like, Ew. Now, Ryan, let's yeah. go back to the second part of this question because I think it's so important here. Yeah. Is it possible that I could be a toxic person to you but really, sin uh, really sincere and lovely person to, to many others? Yeah, I love that she's considering, like, am I a toxic person right yeah. and and if you're asking if you're a toxic person i mean you just got to look at your behavior right going right. back to what you were saying are you exhibiting uh toxic behavior because if you are then yeah it doesn't matter who might find you lovely mm -hmm. you're still you're and, and going back to what i was trying to say of if you're exhibiting toxic behavior and you have someone who is encouraging that mm -hmm. and then you both uh kind of you know put your toxic behavior together and project it out into the world yeah uh yeah. that that isn't necessarily positive yeah. affirmation it's like a know? much less fun captain planet yeah. well, I, uh, <laughs> right. I think i think that it's possible to be incompatible without being toxic well, too and yes, i think that's, of course yeah th th that's where she's going here you you mm -hmm. may find a partner who is a lovely person but the two of you are are incompatible and because you're incompatible that can lead to toxic behavior on your part mm. or their part yeah. or, or both parts now i love what jamie said a moment ago about how two broken people sort of working together to to fix things I, I, if i were to uh, rephrase that a little bit now um there's a song that i recommended on the podcast a few weeks ago by ken yates called two wrongs mm. and, and the lyric in there is two wrongs make us right right and right. And, and you know, of course, two wrongs don't make a right. But if if we're both broken people, we can still enter a relationship and be better off mm -hmm. because of it. We, well, we often say that that um, one plus one equals two. That's mathematics, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But that's not always true. Mm -hmm. One drop of water plus one drop of water is not two drops of water if yeah. you combine them together. Mm -hmm. Totally. And you also you have to be confident. 
Because look, we know this from social media. A lot of words are being thrown around uh, recently in the political world with mm. cancel culture and stuff that um, are starting to like lose their meaning. So there is a chance that if uh, 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 poor Eva was in a relationship and trying her best and they weren't compatible and she broke up with the guy, mm -hmm. that the guy could be storming out and just go, yo, you're toxic. You ruined this, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And it's like, mm, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. It could just be a bad relationship. Yeah. And now that is just kind of like a buzzword mm -hmm. of this generation. And we're yeah. kind of like overusing it because most relationships, if you dive in or have a recording of a fight like at some point or another like each one of you is gonna say something toxic to each other is gonna say something you regret is gonna up up apologize hopefully mm -hmm. um but i think the biggest way you can kind of if you're just focusing on yourself mm -hmm. and you are as confident as humanly possible the red flags are there like when i wasn't confident when i really was codependent when i would just just wanted to be in a relationship to, to define me i remember i tried to have one of those like hey what's your crazy i'll tell you my crazy conversations and first date literally i like brought it up i was like let's just say what we need to work on i thought it'd be like cute and she goes uh she goes um well i get jealous oftentimes of nothing and sometimes because of that i've gotten violent and i was like i'm in <laughs> oh, we moved in i'm in, in three months <laughs> three months we moved in i was together with her in los angeles for two years and guess what she got jealous often violent uh always of nothing but let's, <laughs> let's talk about jealousy because i think jealousy is a wasted emotion i don't think there's ever a positive outcome for jealousy mm -hmm. and in fact uh write about this in the book uh ryan and I I went back and forth on on the virtues that make a, a really good relationship and mm -hmm. I, I can talk about some of those here i mean it, to me there are uh, a bunch of different ways you can you can repair and strengthen your relationships and, and there are good virtues like caring and love and understanding yeah. and tolerance we, we we can talk about the good virtues yawn get to the good stuff to well, the jealousy yeah <laughs> jealousy is one of what we call the 13 overrated yeah. virtues i like, uh, that. I like and, that and so there are th there are 13 virtues in our life and many of them we we recognize as being like i don't think there's ever room for jealousy there are other virtues like empathy which i think there is room for mm -hmm. and we, we clarified that in the book but i think it's wildly overrated mm -hmm. empathy is very far overrated but we often use the term empathy to mean compassion. And I would even argue that compassion might be underrated. We mm -hmm. need to be far more compassionate for other people without feeling their exact pain. For sure. I don't want my dentist also feeling the drill in his mouth as he's drilling into my mouth. Right, right, right. right, right. That's, that's true empathy. Now, let me, let me finish up, Eva, because we have to move on. But um, I do want to just finish out this definition for toxicity because I think it will set up the rest of this episode yeah. really well. So in the book, there's a, a section called How to Be Yourself. And um, I, I like that. That would be a great just book title, by the mm -hmm. way, How to Be Yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and in this section, we, we sort of set up toxicity. And, and it comes right after this section about finding empowering relationships. And so that's some context for you here. Now, you might be thinking, of course, I want empowering people in my life. But how do I know whether a relationship is good or bad, supportive or toxic, growing or dying? Maybe, in fact, by the way, that that's a those are two dichotomies there. What's the opposite of a toxic relationship? It's a supportive relationship. Mm. There's not room if you're supportive, there's no room for toxicity, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, how do you know how do I know whether a relationship is good or bad, supportive or toxic, growing or dying? The short the short answer is you probably already know. You know. If you're wondering whether a relationship is toxic, it probably is. Mm -hmm. A relationship is toxic when it's very harmful or unpleasant in a pervasive or insidious way. Does the relationship constantly make you feel sad, agitated or upset, anxious, angry or scared, guilt-ridden, chast uh, 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 chastised or regretful? Then there's a good chance it's toxic. But when a relationship is truly outstanding, you don't wonder at all. You just know it's outstanding. It literally stands out. And so I, I think that's the thing. When we start wondering, like, I've, I've never wondered about, like, is my relationship with Bex toxic? Um, 
because like there hasn't been any toxic behavior that has led there. Now, because if you said that, should kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Eva, I'm gonna send you. I can't send you a copy of this book because it's not out yet. But we have a, a book called Essential. It's an essay collection with 150 essays about simple living, intentional living, 12 different areas of intentional living. One of those areas has to do with relationships, and I think you'll find a lot of value in that book. It's called Essential Essays by the Minimalist. If you like our podcast, it's it's actually our longest audio book. It's over six hours. So Sean, if you want to give Eva the audiobook version of Essential, or if she wants the book book or the ebook version, we're happy to send those to you as well. Ryan, Christina has a question for us. Christina from LA, how realistic is it to expect to find a partner that's on your own frequency? I've got a wonderful partner, but he struggles with untreated depression and won't acknowledge it. He's very good to me, but disagrees with much of my social justice, peaceful, kind, minimalist ways. I love him, but feel drained after spending much time with him. I'm always giving. I want to receive too. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally l- let me just say this. So I'm going to set times, you up yeah. for the uh, set you up for this, Jamie. Um, I love him, but I feel drained after spending much time with him. I could actually, if you it just were to tweeze out that sentence, yeah, that sentence applies to me and Bex. Uh, in fact, it's the reason that we have you know a, a, a non traditional living situation, right? And it's because I need copious amounts of alone time. Now, the key has been setting that expectation well in advance. Mm -hmm. Now, Jamie, tell me about Christina's question here. Um, Is it realistic to expect to find a partner that's on your own frequency? So, I think what most people do is they try to force it, right? Mm. Because they do... Did you guys ever see Daniel Sloss's um, Netflix special, Jigsaw? No, no. I've heard you recommend it. You though. guys would love, it, love it. He's <laughs> such a good comic. And the the, the Netflix special, uh, the last time I talked to him, was responsible for causing, I believe, over like 50,000 breakups, like uh, a oh, couple wow. hundred divorces. And it's not him trashing couples by any means. Uh, yeah. Actually, I think when he did my podcast, he announced that he was actually in a relationship and really happy. And everyone was <laughs> like, you son of a. Uh, <laughs> and But it wasn't trashing it. It was saying that we don't appreciate ourselves enough. Mm. And it's so funny. As I get older, I realize that all of these cliches that people tell you are essentially the keys to life. You just ignore them, right? Mm. So like for years, people are like, you have to be alone uh, to learn how to love yourself before you love others. And I was like, that's stupid. And I would move (laughs) in with some other girl who would like hit me. Uh, (laughs) And then, you know, I did what uh, everyone does uh, when they turn 38 and are single for the first time on Valentine's Day. I took mushrooms and I was like, I need to be alone. And it was (laughs) amazing. And I've been alone and I've been happy and I've been confident for the first time. And I ended up in so many relationships like she's describing. And I, and a lot of times, I just settled and that's what Sloss talks about like mm-hmm. we just settle because we think we somehow found our soulmate who happened to live in the same neighborhood as us and like you know and he was joking around that the second something gets bad he's out Mm. Um, and there is you know I mean that's kind of hyperbolic obviously but there is something to it sounds like she may be, you know, for the longest time, I just wanted to fix people. I thought that like, I would be the one who comes in and saves the day. And women are actually known for doing that, right? They're like attracted to the broken guy. Mm. And like, cause I've been the broken guy before too, who I'm sure they want to fix. Mm. And, um, I don't know, man. I think that it sounds like the way she's describing it, it doesn't sound like what you were saying with like you and Bex were like, you need like alone time. It sounds like she comes in and this is what I relate to very much. Um, and I don't have an answer. I'm just kind of rambling, but I just related so hard to this email mm-hmm. where it sounds like she, For I'll speak for myself. I would come in and be like, hey, I know you've been like, really bummed out and like we've been fighting but like what if we did this what if we just started like working out together or what if we like make this thing or what if we go on a road trip or what if we and Mm. then the like eeyore on the other side is just like i don't want to i don't whatever so you just feel like you're just giving and giving and trying and trying and because you see there's decency behind that sort of wall of negativity or depression or whatever you feel like it's your job to fix it or you feel like you would be a bad person if you leave the relationship or selfish i mean one of my friends is in such a toxic emotional abusive relationship and she's like but I don't want to look like a monster if I leave and oh, I th- but wow. I think so wow. many people feel that yeah, way no, I'm, they I'm feel like they're I'm breaking laughing. up the family you no, know? I'm, I'm laughing because I've, I, I see that in, in myself now now Ryan um, with, with Christina's question here I mean 
there's something telling about the is it realistic to expect. Here's what I'll say is don't expect love. You don't just simply fall in love. In fact, the, when I fell in love with Bex, you fell in love with Mariah when we stopped looking for it and trying to pursue it in that way. Mm. However, I think it's a weird expectation because somewhere around puberty and it's often because we've been acculturated to do so, we start to expect love in ways that we don't expect other grand things in life. Like uh, we don't expect to just get an education mm. at Harvard, mm. right? We don't have a soulmate diploma waiting for us somewhere. <laughs> right, we, we don't expect a million dollars or six pack abs. What we do is if we want those things, we work at it. Right, well I, I think about the us box that we talk about a lot, Josh, where yeah. you, know, you have this us box in a relationship and sometimes we give to that us box and sometimes we, we take from it. Yeah. Uh, to keep account of who has given and who has taken is, is not the best way to approach a relationship because I think that ultimately becomes like a zero sum game. Yeah. But in the same token, when you can see that the other person isn't giving to it at all and only taking. 100%. That is, that's an issue. I think it's, I mean, if I had to recommend something for Christina, it's not like, okay, this is a toxic relationship. Leave your partner. It's more about, like, Christina, you've got to have a really tough conversation with your partner right now. Yeah, th that's what I was going to say. And, you know, th that's where I was going with the um, with the confidence thing, which is for the longest time I would end up in relationships that would kind of bring me down and or that I would settle for or I'd be like, ah, you know, I want this and this. But I was just so excited somebody liked me. Anytime a girl would approach me to this day, this kind of happens. Like if some like Instagram model hits me up, I'm like, did you DM the wrong account? Like, did you mean to like uh, uh, some hot other like Jamie from Brazil or something? And and so I'm always just I was always so grateful that someone was just there. And ever since I've been single, uh, for the first time in my life this year, I am like, I'm going to design. Because, look, being single, getting dumped. Guys, I literally, my life was bad before COVID happened. Uh, like, I got dumped, lost my cat, like, all this shit in the same mm. week. Then quarantine happened, mm. right? And so if I wanted this narrative of, like, I'm alone in quarantine, about, I would have doomed. Doom, doom, yeah, doom. And yeah. instead I was like, I'm going to design the exact life that I want to have forever so when i find someone they're either going to enhance it or we can enhance enhance each other's lives mm -hmm. but i'm not going to be settling and so that's what i did i've always wanted to wake up at five i've always wanted to meditate i've always wanted time to read books to do jujitsu to go hiking all this stuff and i do that now mm -hmm. and so there, where that ties in with her is i would be in so many relationships that she described because i thought that was as good as i can get mm. now that i have this life that i sincerely love there have been girls who have been really cool over, and I am I was lonely over quarantine. I mean, they check off my boxes. There were jujitsu girls or artists or whatever. And I have had zero problem saying no, because the second we would have a conversation where I would say something important to me, which it sounds like this happens all the time with mm -hmm. her, with her boyfriend, with the SJW stuff, mm -hmm. and they would kind of like take a shot at it. Or then I could be like, oh, cool. You're a cool girl, but this isn't gonna work. And I would peace out immediately but i never could do that before but yeah. let me say this it's not necessary that you have the same beliefs in fact no 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 100 no, percent. I, I think it's helpful that you have different beliefs in some areas because it creates some really expansive conversations that gives you room to grow i agree it may solidify your point of view or it may change your mind which is one of the most beautiful things you can do in a relationship is when you help someone change their mind or they help you change yours mm -hmm. or they help you strengthen your position what is key is that you need to determine whether or not you have the same values or not so yeah. before we wrap this up i just want to mention this to everyone if you don't know what your values are it's going to be really hard to get into a relationship and grow in that relationship we have a, a free values worksheet on our website that helps you identify the four types of values, some specific examples in there of those types of values. I did that worksheet and just wrote cash rules everything around me and then signed my name <laughs> with dollar signs. Hey, one thing <laughs> I wonder why he's unhappy. Right, right, right. <laughs> so so uh, theminimalists.com slash V, there's a essay there as well called mm -hmm. How to Understand Your Values. That way we don't have to expand on the values anymore. R Ryan? R real quick too with Christina, uh, can you expect to find someone on the same frequency? Yes. 
but I don't think anyone should ever expect to find the perfect relationship. They're out there. Mm -hmm. Perfect relationships are out there, but to expect that is a really poor expectation. Even with Josh and I, who have been friends since we were fat little fifth graders, right? Like there, there <laughs> are the things. Cutest image. <laughs> there Obviously are, yeah. there are things that uh, we have to. Uh, I, I don't know if it's compromise, but we have to consider each other's feelings on things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with a romantic relationship. And romantic relationship is even harder because you live with that person, you see them every day. Yeah. But there's always going to be these these small. Is compromise the right word there? Yeah, I, so, so the, I, there's a, a section in Love People Use Things about this. So uh, two of what I used to think were overrated virtues are sacrifice and compromise. So the, what used to be 15 overrated virtues. But <laughs> uh, since you know, being in a, a long-term relationship and since growing older, more mature, and, and, and realizing a few things about myself, I realized that sometimes we, we sacrifice the wrong things and we make the wrong compromises. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are two distinct terms by mm -hmm. the way but yes it's it's okay to compromise as long as we're not compromising our value right. yeah and i i'm sorry uh, i have one more thing for christina Go could, for you, it. could you that that sjw comment the yes you want to reread it yeah can you just hit that again uh so he's very good to me but disagrees with much of my social justice peaceful kind minimalist ways okay cool so i just want to be very clear what joshua said is important you should be able to have disagreements. It can heighten you intellectually, like all of these things, right? If I have a girlfriend and she grew up shooting guns and I'm like a staunch anti-gun guy, I want to hear from her because she knows something I don't about gun control. Right. And you could actually have like a really dope conversation. We talked about this the last time I was on the episode mm -hmm. about how to compromise politically. However, um, I've talked to people f who listen to my podcast who have written in and when they have partners that the Jamie Kilstein podcast. Oh no! By now, the way. now I'm gonna have to curse. I apologize. Uh, it is now rebranded, and everyone loves the new name. It is much more apt to who I am. It is called a fuck ups guide to self help. Um, <laughs> it's we, good. Yeah, it's pretty great. And the the logo is just a cartoon me face down. Like it's perfect. <laughs> um, so if you have a partner that makes you feel like. Stupid for trying to better your life is where I lose my patience. So if every time she goes, you know, hey, you don't have to do this, but like I watched this minimalism documentary and I think I would feel really better if I like donated my clothes and he feels guilty for whatever reason or he starts to project and he goes after her or if she, you know, or if she really does care about a political issue, yeah. you know, and posts about Black Lives Matter or whatever and, and, and he makes her feel dumb for doing it. Hmm. That is different than disagreeing. I've had women uh, write into the show who have wanted to lose weight and become healthy and their partners attack them for it. Mm. Why? Because they are unhealthy and they don't want to fix themselves. And I think if you don't want to fix yourself, right? Cool. But if you're going to hold back the person that you claim to love for trying to better their life or be kinder to other people mm -hmm. or like expand, then that's where I'm just like, get out. Yeah. Like that to me is toxic. I wonder if Christina can help her partner maybe look at what the deeper issue is going on. Like, uh -huh. yes. like how, how can she show love and kindness and respect and help him dig a little bit deeper? Because, you know, Josh, you mentioned jealousy earlier, and I agree to foster jealousy is, is wasted energy. Mm -hmm. But jealousy or anger or any of those negative emotions, they are... Uh, signifiers and it is it is a it is a symptom of something much deeper going on so if you can take that jealousy that anger that wanting to drag someone down and really look at the deeper issue like that's where maybe those emotions it, it can be a good uh, a good idea to just dig deeper with oh, those symptoms. Be a huge breakthrough, like with the health thing. Like if that guy would just admit, like, look, I've been struggling with food forever, mm -hmm. and then maybe they get to do it together. It yeah. could actually turn into this really beautiful thing. The problem is when people that that's why just language like that makes something go off in my head. It's when people double down, and it's just kind of like I'm going to be miserable, so everyone around me has to be too. Instead of like, hey, this sucks. Let's let's help each other. Yeah, we have to move on, but I need to get the last word in here. Remember this you can't change the people around you but you can change the people around you and too often i think mm. we try to change someone i'm going to make you a minimalist i'm going to make you fit i'm going to make you make more money or whatever of course you can't change someone you can inspire them perhaps mm -hmm. 
and, and that's great. I mean, in fact, we she uses that word partner in her question. A great partnership is inspirational, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, if you were to figure out what does a great partner look like, whether it is your current partner or someone else, Christina, maybe write that down and figure out what qualities. And then, of course, when you go through that values worksheet, the minimalists.com slash V, you can figure out what type of values does an ideal partner have and does that fit your current partner? And if not, let me say this. I'm not telling you to break up with him, but you'll be fine without him. And, and here's what I mean by that. I would be fine without Bex. I'd be fine without Ryan. I'd be fine without Podcast Sean or Jordan No More. Don't you say Jess. it. Don't you say it with me. I can't. I, my heart can't take it. I can't live without Jamie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. I, I think at first that sounds callous, right? We have a rule in our minimalist rule book, 16 Rules for Living with Less, mm -hmm. which is a free ebook on our website if you want to check it out. One of those rules is called Willing to Walk Away Rule. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I'm willing to walk away from any physical item. I'm willing to walk away from a habit, from an idea, and I'm even willing to walk away from people. Mm -hmm. And at first, you're like, well, wait, that's really cold. Is that compassionate? And I would posit that it is probably the most compassionate thing is your willingness to walk away because that means that my relationship with Podcast Sean or with my wife mm -hmm. or with Ryan is not birthed out of some sort of pious obligation. Right. Mm. It is birthed out of a daily commitment. In fact, Bex and I have this conversation once a month. Hey, do we still want to be in this? Mm. And man, that's a hard conversation the first time you have it, but every time after that, it gets easier and easier. And now it's just sort of like a check-in. Hey, mm. uh, it, and it's more like, do we still want to be in this? And if so, what does this look like going mm. forward? You know, my insecure self of yesteryear would have thought you were just a real jerk. Right. But now I look at it and I'm like, oh, Josh has found a way to really love who he is as a person. Yeah. And mm. that is how you get that willingness to walk away. Oh. When you can look in the mirror and be happy with what you're looking at, like that, not physically, but you know, you're happy with the person that you've become. Yeah. That's powerful. It's so powerful. And I feel like this, like, you know, I turned 38 in May and this is like the first year I've really done it. But I also find it's better for that, for your partner, mm -hmm. if you get rid of them or that person, if, 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 if you honestly are just like, I'm the only person holding them together and I have to fix them and I have to, but I'm miserable. It's like, you're probably per the misery is probably sensible. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. both of you will probably be better in the long run. Um, but yeah, that self-love confidence thing is the most important, I think. For sure. Christine, I want to give you two tickets or maybe just one ticket. You get to decide to <laughs> our Los Angeles tour stop this uh, November. Uh, we're going back on tour. Uh, we've got a bunch of cities all over the U.S. Um, we're starting with the, the West Coast. Uh, it's called the Les Coast Tour. I want to see you guys on tour. I didn't know that. That's well, you, awesome. You should come on out. Maybe we'll even have him as a special guest at one Oh, yeah, we we'll could. do a surprise. Oh, I'll That'd do a great. set. I'll intro you guys. I would oh, love that it. would we'll, be awesome. Let's, let's oh, talk about okay, it. Okay, 100%. Um, yeah. So maybe it'll be Los Angeles. Maybe it'll be somewhere else. Uh, in fact, if you don't see a city near you on our website, theminimalists.com slash tour, just put your email address in there. We'll never send you spam or junk or ads, but we will notify you if we, oh, not if, when we are coming to a city near you. And that's not just the U.S. and Canada. That is worldwide. We've got a, a new documentary and a new book coming out, so I can imagine we'll be all over the place soon. TheMinimalists.com slash tour. Christina, come on out. Get a hug. They're free and transferable. Are we hugging on this tour? I mean, I've been hugging a lot recently. Oh, that's right. You're invincible now. That's right. I'm invisible. <laughs> You guys are the only ones that would hug me in Los Angeles. <laughs> Which also means if I have COVID, I know it's from you guys. That's pre-COVID, though. Yeah, that, was, yeah, that yeah. was before the pandemic. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, All Josh, right, uh, you know what Ryan, it is? what? It's time for our lightning round. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do during the lightning round? You know what we do? You we... tell Jamie to shut up when he's going too long. <laughs> this is where we answer your text messages. You can text your questions and comments to 937-202-4654. You can even text your emojis of what you've gotten rid of recently. That has been really fun. A lot of people are texting what they're decluttering. They'll That's just send amazing. Those emoji. Now, now, those texts go literally to both Ryan's and my phone. So mm. if you text that phone number, 937-202-4654, we respond to as many people as we can, and we even respond to some people on the podcast. Now, Jamie, you probably recall, during the lightning round, mm -hmm. this is where Ryan and I and our guests do our best to answer every question with just a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. Jesus we Christ. put the text to these minimal maxims in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you'd like. And now you can find all of our minimal maxims in one place, minimalmaxims.com. All right. Ilzan has a question. How do you deal with toxic people in the workplace? I love my job, but the environment is toxic. 
I feel like leaving, but my heart aches when I think of the great work I'll leave behind. Well, let me give you a pithy answer, Jamie, and you you expand for me. Oh, here. thank you. You're saving me. <clears throat> Malice never intersects with meaningful work. Oh, that was going to be mine. That was, <laughs> that was my pithy <laughs> answer. Them. So I guess I'll just do a long one. <laughs> um, man, that is so rough. I mean, look, you will do your best work if you're happy. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you were doing that kind of work that you get to do in that environment, but in a place where you feel good about yourself, where you're not have that like you don't have that sixth grader. Oh, my God, I didn't do my homework and the alarm goes off like churning in your stomach feeling. Mm -hmm. um, imagine what you could do. So one, maybe there's a place that you can do that same work. Mm -hmm. Um that's less toxic. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's a way you can do it independently. But if not, what I would do is make sure that you have a rigorous self-care um, program. So before you go to work, how are you starting your day? Are you just rushing out of the house and jumping into this toxic workspace? Or do you have an hour to maybe go take a walk, to meditate, mm -hmm. to stretch, to do something like that's just for you mm -hmm. so that you can show up just like stoic, kick down the door of this office, like kind of like put your headphones in, do your dope work, then leave and like, yeah, leave, go to a kickboxing class, do something else so that uh, your, your, your shitty work life is sandwiched with uh, mm -hmm. just taking the best care of yourself possible. Yeah, it's interesting. I think about the toxic work environment that I used to be part of in the telecommunications business. And I compromised because I, I made really, really awesome money. Right. And that was my compromise. I'm like, well, I'm making this incredible amount of money. Uh, it's a toxic work environment, but where else am I going to be able to make this money? And you actually sacrificed in a way too. You sacrificed yeah. meaningful work mm -hmm. so you could make a so I can make a, money a, a not meaningful paycheck. And that's not to say that money's wrong, but when it becomes, you know, it should be in the vehicle, but it shouldn't be in the driver's seat. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think Ilzen has a even better excuse than money. It's meaningful work, right. right? So she's making these compromises, or he is making these compromises. Is that, is that a he? he, he. Yes. Sorry. So he's making these compromises that is allowing him to do meaningful work but he's still making the wrong type of sacrifices so my pithy answer is this the road to misery is paved with compromised values it doesn't matter what the That's end great. goal is if you are constantly compromising your values you're going to be miserable mm -hmm. yeah, there are a few words i wrote down as the two of you were talking here that just came to mind because here's the thing as i said a moment ago malice never intersects with meaningful work meaning if you're in a workplace that is toxic and the behavior of the people is toxic you're probably not going to do your best work yeah however those skills are transferable to somewhere mm -hmm. else if you're working at one telecom company and that particular work environment is toxic you can take those skills elsewhere to a better work yes. environment i was just down at um ramsey solutions and I got to tell you, it's the best workplace that I've ever been in. Uh, the, these, the, the people who, who run the place, it's like, you know, Dave Ramsey actually wrote a book about leadership. It's called Entree Leadership. It's a great book, but it's not, he took that and actually created a workplace with a thousand employees mm -hmm. that, that mimics that. And they, they have a, a, a zero strike gossip rule. If you're caught gossiping <gasps> about anyone, you're fired immediately. That's Whoa. amazing. And I always say that if someone gossips to you, they will gossip about you. Yep. And I talked to Dave about this while I was down there. We were working on a project together. And he he, he was saying, well, it, because if someone gossips about you, they're taking away one of your most precious resources, uh, your identity. Yeah, mm. but you know when I heard about that guy? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so there are a few things that I, I, I find meaningful work is... is involves and uh, it's focus work mm -hmm. and, and focus work means a few things like, that you, know, you are not distracted you're not busy it's hard enough that it, it makes sense to keep doing but it's it's also not so hard that you lose interest like if someone were to bring up quantum physics i just like i i zone out because it's not for me ryan is actually enjoys something like that so it, it may it may make sense for ryan to dive deep into quantum physics he could be focused on it for me it wouldn't it wouldn't make much i cannot sense. dive deep into quantum physics <laughs> okay. well, right, right, but, <laughs> but i do enjoy talking me. about it. Yeah, you yeah. could go farther down sure, the rabbit hole sure. than i would yeah, yeah. because of interest it's not because i'm i'm less smart than you necessarily 
necessarily, but it, it just means that I, I don't have that same interest level. And mm. the same is true with like reading Infinite Jest, for example. Mm. That, that doesn't interest you. That's why mm. I never recommend that book to people mm -hmm. because it takes you know, quite the rabbit just hole. Just somebody give me a copy of it where I don't have to keep flipping to the back of the book. That's all I want. That's all <laughs> I want. The Kindle version. That's mine. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, a few other words. Content. Uh, so Jamie said you want to be happy, and I agree with that. You want to be happy, but happy is, happiness is fleeting. Uh, contentment is not, and so so I would encourage you to find work that that you are content with, and ultimately that you're joyous with, that you experience joy yeah, with, yeah. because joy makes room for all the other emotions. There will be drudgery, but there is room for drudgery with joy. There will be pain. There will be some struggle. Meaningful work requires struggle, but Joy makes room for all of those negative emotions as yeah, well. Yeah, like there are times where I'm writing a new song or a new stand-up bit or even like dreading doing the podcast. But then when I get to really think about what am I doing, like, oh my God, I get to do this. I get to write a song. I get to. Or when I finally hit the right chord or the right word in the punchline or just start the podcast, then suddenly I'm like, ha, ah, this is dope. Like it doesn't mean you're going to find something where you're just like happy all the time and whatever, but mm. you should be, your baseline shouldn't be like dread. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet that podcast, Sean. <laughs> your baseline shouldn't be dread. All right, Jamie, Ryan, uh, before we get into our listener tips mm -hmm. and our added value segment today, our added value segment does tie into the whole toxic people thing, so stay tuned for that. Is it Britney Spears' song, Toxic? <laughs> oh, I hope it is. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, we do have a bunch more surprise questions, and, and you're going to love these. Uh, how do you let go of toxic family members? Oh. How do you divorce a close friend? Mm. This is so good. What's the difference between... A savable and an unsavable relationship. Okay. Mm. How do you get past the trauma and pain of toxic relationships? How did Jamie overcome his recent battle with suicidal thoughts? Yeah, baby, still here. Um, <laughs> also, <laughs> we're going to talk about uh, the toxic relationship that Ryan and I had that almost ended our friendship about 10 years ago. Mm. Plus, we're going to discuss two toxic relationships that I had to end this year personally. Also, uh, you heard about Chris D'Elia's scandal? I mean, oh. you and I were texting about this last night. I have yeah. not heard about it. Oh, we're, we're, You haven't? We're going to no. touch on it. So uh, uh, I've got some thoughts. Get ready to hear Ryan's horrifying reaction when he yes. finds out what happened. <laughs> yeah, it's you, you're going to be not horrified. not good. Really? Yeah, we'll, we'll get good. into it on the maximum. We'll also, that, uh, that and a million more Did questions. Did his character in you come true? <laughs> uh, yeah yes uh, all that and a million more questions for jamie kilstein oh and uh there's one thing it's on the table right now but you can't see it if you're watching this on camera you'll be able to see it on the maximal i purchased something ryan mm. don't say what it is because it's on the table you are, i purchased something you're a phony that i shouldn't have purchased this year <laughs> and i tell you that i regret it and i'm going to get rid of it and i'm going to tell you how on the maximum. You'll never this guess week. what Josh is going to declutter next. So is Click this it? To I, find I, out. Am I saying bye to the non-Patreon people? You're, you're, yeah, well, just wait a second. So, uh, <laughs> all right. I was going to be polite. I was going to say thank you for supporting the minimalist. I had this sweet thing I was going to say. Forget it. <laughs> I don't want to hear there's your, yeah. There's room for that, but we're we're almost there. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Uh, this week, that's all that. Uh, the rest, everything, all the questions we just discussed, the, those will be on the Maximal episode this week. Uh, you can check out. It's on the Minimalist Private Podcast. It's a completely separate podcast, mm. and it's just a couple bucks. And it's the most honest way for the minimalist to earn an income because we don't believe in advertisements. So we make money only if you find value in and support what we create. Head on over to theminimalists.com slash support. By the way, that also keeps this 100% advertisement free. So thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Head on over there to theminimalists.com slash support to subscribe and get your personal link so that our private podcast plays in your favorite podcast app. Ryan, what else you got for us this week? Here are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Check them out. My name is uh, Nick Kozan from Evansville, Indiana. And uh, I just got done listening to episode 55 on Critics. And I just wanted to share a quote that I heard from my friend, and uh, he got this from his grandpa. And it's all, one of my all-time favorite quotes now. Um, and it is, don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. Hello, this is Cece from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I just want to quickly recommend something that's added a lot of value to my life for a while. Um, it's a website called unroll.me. U-N-R-O-L-L -L dot M-E, and you just enter your email address, and it pulls up every single email list you're subscribed to, and then you can easily look at the list and just click 
unsubscribe um, from all these email lists. It's a lot easier than scrolling to the bottom of an email and finding the unsubscribe button. So, yeah, that's helped for me a lot lately. All right, Jamie. Now, this is the part where you say nice things about us. All right, ready, nothing go. To say. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Listen to my podcast and only my podcast. <laughs> I agree. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this show. I mean, I think, like, it, it's been so cool. Um, not cool, but, I mean, like, quarantine's been really hard for a lot of people. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, I think shows like yours are really, really, really important. And mm -hmm. I've even had to, like, some of the more, like, comedy-heavy podcasts and whatever, I've actually had to take them out of my rotation um, on, like, a t almost like a toxic friendship where because I was alone during quarantine – oh, here's some advice. If there are people who are still, like, alone in quarantine, um, you know how they talk about, like, you are the five people you surround yourself with or whatever? Yes. If you don't have people – you can make that what you are taking into your brain, whether mm. it be books, whether it be podcasts, because when I'm listening to some of those comedy podcasts that are just talking about like getting like trashed on the road and like sleeping around or whatever, there's still that little high school part of me that's like, oh, that's cool. That's what I want to do. And when I listen to podcasts like your guys, I'm like, oh, I should just be a good person. Um, yeah. So thank you to everybody. And uh, yeah, my podcast is uh, a fuck ups guide to self help. You can go to jamiekilsteinpodcast.com or a fuckupsguide.com. Uh, I'm verified and cool on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> However, I only enjoy Instagram and would like to build that up. So unfollow me on Twitter uh, and follow me on Instagram at the Jamie Kilstein, where I make weird little comedy videos and uh, post motivational stuff. They're great, man. You're Jamie, awesome, dude. I love you, brother. I love you guys so mm -hmm. much. Thanks for well, being here, man. Let's talk about our added value this week. I've been reading this book uh, by Lionel Shriver. She is one of the most just gorgeous she writes some of the most gorgeous prose that i've read in a long time uh she wrote that book called uh we talked about this on a maximal episode but just i just touched on it briefly i didn't really talk about the book at all she wrote uh, some thoughts about kevin which would turn into a film which oh yeah, yeah oh yeah that film was messed up yeah yeah the so is the book okay and, cool. and, and so she has a new book out called the motion of the body through space Ooh. and it's sort of about aging uh mm. and, and but it's and also it's about this marriage. So there's this aging couple. They're both in their 60s. And their bodies, they're both really healthy and physically healthy, have been most of their lives. But their bodies are breaking down. And there's some sort of toxic resentment between the two of them. And mm -hmm. it manifests because it's in third person. So there's a narrator who's sort of inside their thoughts. And it's great to see the inner workings of toxicity among two seemingly good people. Oh, I want to read this. It's, it's a really good book. Uh, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. Also a link to, to Jamie's podcast in the show notes as well. The book oh. is by Lionel Shriver. It's called The Motion of the Body Through Space. And real quick for right here, right now, here's one thing that's going on in the life of the minimalist. My writing class is finally coming back. It's back, baby. Oh, sick. <laughs> 20 or no, uh, 48 hours only. How to write better.org. We're going to open up enrollment at the end of July, but go ahead and put your email address in there now. And we'll notify you. It's the first hundred students. What we do, I only do this class two, sometimes three times a year. And so this will be our, our summer class. Uh, enrollment opens for 48 hours or until the class fills up. We'll notify you via email. Also, if you put your email there at howtowritebetter.org is the email or is the, the website, you'll get the free ebook, 11 Ways to Write Better. You really missed a good opportunity to name it, like how to write best. I was gonna write. I was gonna name it "How to Write Gooder." How to write gooder. How to write gooder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been good. Uh, you can follow the Minimalists on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Minimalists. Come to one of our live podcast shows. Yes. Visit theminimalists.com slash tour to find a city near you. Have a if you have a question, comment, or minimalism tip for our podcast, email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. You can comment on this episode at youtube.com slash theminimalists. Let me know about my facial hair. And mm -hmm. if you want our show notes in your inbox, sign up for our email list at theminimalists.com. You'll also receive our simple Sunday emails whenever we send those. And if you leave here today with just one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things. Because the opposite is toxic. <laughs> That's great. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. The Minimalists.